Okay, so today we're gonna to be installing uh, a big brake kit on this beautiful diesel E70. It's, it comes with 20 inch uh, wheels, so they should fit just right. So this is a very popular kit for those who tow or just wanna improve the looks. And this actually four piston rears and six piston front Porsche brakes. And this is the pad, just as a reference. Here is the, uh, my hand. All the brackets and everything comes with it. And this, we call it like a budget friendly kit. It comes with power stops, uh, carbon ceramic pads, brackets and such. And here are the uh, brake rotors. And these are huge and still fit 19 inch wheels. Okay, first of all, we obviously got to loosen the wheel lugs and then we're gonna jack the car up and take the wheel off it's gonna be uh we're gonna take them off and work simultaneously on both sides and we're gonna get to the wheel it is off that's what you see we kind of start removing the uh right now the brake rotors are hot so we're gonna just do what we can do i recommend going with hand tools but this will do okay this thing goes there then we're gonna be removing the caliper which is gonna be, we're gonna take the whole thing off. So it's gonna be those two e-torques. I don't know the size yet, we'll see. Two e-torques right here. I'm gonna take these off and we will get to it. Okay, so here, here we got the uh, brake rotors. This is the factory uh, BMW diesel 35D rotor. And as you see, the pad does not come all the way. There is a rust ring there. And this is the uh, BMW 550 GT, which is 374 millimeter rotor. And uh, the best part about this uh, rotors, that's why I always suggest this Paget brand, is they not only come with the aluminum hub, which makes it lighter and better on the heat dissipation, wheel bearings and such, but also uh, they come coated and you are very highly unlikely to get any rust, like rust ring or rust inside in those vents for years to come. So this rotor is larger. We wanna weigh those once we remove the rotor and it's pretty much gonna get to it. The caliper, we are gonna need to uh, free up this brake, brake line, brake hose. So vice grips and just, just move it up and down side to side. Gonna slide right out. Not right out, but right out. No, just gonna help a little bit. There you go. Okay. Now we can take the caliper off. I'm gonna hit it on the control arm. Okay. So get the ratchet back there. The size is E18. A tight fit if you don't have e18 i think i think is either a 14 or 17 millimeter should fit but i would recommend the right tools for this it's a18 once the rotor is removed if you got time i recommend cleaning the dust shield which we're gonna do in just a minute and i also uh, suggest using the wire brush on the drill is easiest and just clean up all that caked up stuff in here make sure the rotor is sitting flush there's no wobble there's no anything it's, it's got, it got to be perfectly clean so we'll get to it okay so you should end up with look, something looking like this i got the brake shield cleaned up the best i can i used a proper power as well as sonax wheel cleaner and then um we're gonna put just a very very super light coat of anti-seize that should be plenty on the hub just to make sure in the future your order is not gonna get stuck, which it should not, but it's gonna play it safe. Okay. Yes, this is all you need right there. Should be actually even more than enough. Okay, that should be it. And this is what we're looking at. We're gonna jump another side so now. Done with the other side of the spindle. So another thing is I suggest cleaning the threads on the bolts just to make sure you maintain the torque values. Okay, so then what you do is 
you can use a file. Mine is kind of rusty. I don't file often. But that casting mark here that you can actually see, let me hit it real quick. This casting mark just gotta be totally flat and rounded to the uh, to the to the spindle. That's all you need to do is like like that down on this side. Make sure it's flat. And we're gonna be installing brackets in just a minute. Now it's time to install the bracket. So because the caliper is so big, uh, we'll have to bend the dust shield out of the way. I just use regular pliers and kind of bend on it. Get it out of the way. The bottom piece is the same way. Gotta be bent. And then I have to use the hammer just to tap it in a little bit. So the bracket is gonna be sitting this way. Just make sure all the holes line up and make sure it's flat here. It's all flat. It's not coming taller. That's it. As an example, how this piece is still sticking up above the bracket, you gotta be flush. So I'm gonna trim it just a little more. Take the bracket off and trim it just a little bit more. Make sure it's flush with the, um, with the bracket. Okay, so the way I check if everything clears is very simple. You just install the rotor and spin it. So we had dust shield catching here right over the tie rod and you pretty much just bend it back out the way just a little bit. All you need is two millimeter clearance and you are good to go, smooth like butter. So everything is finger tight pretty much. Uh, we haven't torqued anything down yet. Um, the factory caliper is still connected and hanging on that hook right there. So we just gotta confirm everything is spinning well. There is no, no, uh, nothing touching. Everything is two millimeter or further apart. And uh, I think clears really well. And we are pretty much. So what we're gonna do now is uh, take the caliper off. We're gonna unbolt the factory caliper and hook up the uh, braided brake line to this caliper and this and torque everything to spec. Uh, do the brake line into the caliper first before going to the car. Just make sure everything goes in easy. Make sure the threads are clean and uh, get it started. And that's it. Okay, so the main bolts, uh, bracket to the spindle bolt, they gotta be 85 Newton meters, but I kinda get them to 88 or so, right over. There you go. So on the caliper to bracket bolts, I'd recommend 70, 75 Newton meters. Say that's plenty. Okay, so with this kit, a lot of my customers use ECS lines, which is excellent lines. I love this. I have added like uh, protection here, you know, against rubbing and such. The only thing a lot of people get get issues with is this metal fitting that's supposed to snap into the factory fitting. It is fairly easy to fix. Uh, first of all, this factory fitting, uh, fa factory bracket will bend back. And also, um, what I do is I suggest obviously covering the rotor with a you know rag or anything make sure there's no lube gets on it and just spray just a little bit lube in a metal fitting just a touch of lube right there in the uh that sleeve and slide the fitting up it's going to be very tight but it will slide up i'll show you in just a minute okay so the weight is 24 and a half factory ones now we're going to measure the six Measure is the angle. You can see it here. Uh huh. 30.2. So now, since the calipers are in the way, I mean already installed, we got to gain access to this brake fluid reservoir. Just a bunch of 13 millimeter kind of fittings right here and just turn it kind of clockwise, half a turn, and it should be ready to come off. So now it's time to disconnect the factory caliper since we checked everything and torqued everything, and nothing is catching. Everything clears really good. So I really recommend flare, uh, flare wrench for this factory line. That will be 11 millimeter, you just pop it open. Uh, don't lose that metal clip there, and then you just pretty much the new braided line goes in place for this uh, for this factory rubber line. Should be fairly easy, let's crack it open. There you go. 
so we're gonna see brake fluid in just a sec. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so I forgot about the speed sensor, uh, I mean the brake wear sensor, sorry. I'm getting tired here. You gotta get it from the old pad and you can use very gently pliers or I just pull it out from the pad. Okay, so now you will see the spring stays there. You gotta save that spring for the pad sensor. I'll let the caliper drop because we don't need it anymore, hopefully. And now we're gonna run it all around to its factory location and just snap, snap. And then we're gonna run it. We're gonna put the spring on it spring stays on the sensor and we just slide it right there in the new pad Up, click bam that's it okay so now that the brakes are on it's time to bleed you see braided brake lines calipers everything is beautiful we got access to the uh, brake fluid reservoir as well as this side is also Ready, ready, steady. Okay, so this is what we're gonna use SL6 AT fluid. And a couple of very important things. So first of all, do not let any brake fluid get on any painted surface on the car, on the caliper, anywhere, because it's gonna eat the surface up. It's gonna wrinkle that paint. And secondly is very important, is do not let your brake reservoir get below well actually below minimum i usually recommend staying below that line stay, staying above that line so we're gonna get to it and it's gonna start bleeding the brakes we're gonna start with the passenger side furthest away from the from the brake booster and that's pretty much it what we do is we use clear hose so we can actually see the bubbles the air bubbles and i usually start with the inner bleeder i right, pump Okay. And you see it's speeding all the... Sorry. All the bubbles coming out. That's a lot of air. And we're just gonna tighten it. I pump. You see all the bubbles? Straight up bubbles. Bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. See how dark the uh, brake fluid is also. All right, pump again. Pump. Okay, so we start on the rear brakes. Everything is pretty much the same approach. We take the wheels off. Uh, we're gonna take the bolt uh, setting screw right here. To get it off. So just for comparison, here is the uh, the new 50i rear rotor compared to the uh, diesel. So it's gonna be pretty same idea. It's just we're gonna take this uh, bolt off. I'm gonna let me grab this one, this bolt first, and the second bolt is right here on the bottom. We're gonna take this caliper out of the way. Gonna get this rotor out of the way, and we're gonna trim the dust shield and pretty much install the new uh, new setup. I'll be right back with you. So I found that it's easier to get to the bottom bolt right there with the basic 14 millimeter socket, tall socket. 
and uh, you have plenty of leverage, everything is wide open, and the cal caliper just comes off. Okay, so we're getting the uh, rear spindle, rear, rear hub ready for the rear brakes. Uh, had minor issues with the wheel stuck to the uh, to the disc, to the to the center board, and also had issues with the brake disc stuck to the uh, to the hub. But we got everything out of the way and everything cleaned up. Uh, hub is clean. Also put some anti seize on it. Now we're gonna trim the factory dust shield to clear the new caliper. Okay. Now we tighten the bracket to the uh, spindle. Okay, the same spec, 75 newton meters. So everything is tight, the set screw is tight, the brake rotor is on. So we ended up just bending the edges. They're not gonna be visible inside the wheel, but you can cut them if you want to. And we're ready to install the caliper. On the caliper, it's gonna run one in. I always recommend installing the caliper first I mean the brake line into the caliper first before you actually install the caliper because it'd be pretty tight to do that. So the caliper is on. We use supplied screws, which is kind of finger tight. Same way here. And we also tighten those to 75. That's it. So I'm just hooking up the brake line you can do it the way it was initially, but what I did is I tapped this bracket that's attached to the strut literally just a little bit this way. And that way the brake line does not have a severe angle. Everything angles really nicely. And I still got plenty of room to connect right there to the factory location. So just tap it in. And I always bend those edges right there. I bend them in to lock that, that sliding pin in. So that's it, it's pretty much ready for connect. And we're gonna start on the outside. So the brakes are on. Everything is bled, everything is tightened. It looks beautiful. It's a pothole diesel. You can tell by the pipe. Okay, everything is nice and tight. Beautiful. These rear brake rotors are actually larger than the fronts that came on this car by almost an inch. That's pretty crazy. Okay, we got this X5 buttoned up. All the fresh, huge brakes. Big, big. It's a diesel. The rear brakes are still bedding in, which should be ready in no time. Already, and this is ready to go. Oh, yeah, 